Hi everyone, this is Heather Lautinen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to swap heads inside of Photoshop. But first, please check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com for all of your photography needs. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment and share with your photographer friends. It helps us to produce more content. If you are feeling overwhelmed with Photoshop, first of all, I completely understand. There's a lot to learn. Why don't you check out all of the resources we have available on our website at flourish.academy slash Photoshop. I recently took these two images at a wedding that I shot with my good friend Kayla. And when the bride received her gallery, she said, I love the full length photo, but I like his smile on the close up photo better. Is there any way that we could combine them? And of course, my immediate reaction is absolutely, especially because I will be taking his smile and downsizing it or transforming it to fit the full length image. And that's why this technique works. If she had requested the opposite, for instance, if she would have said, I love the full length photo, but I'd like his face from the full length on the close up, that would not work. Why? Because I would have to expand pixels and there would be a quality issue, issue excuse me, in doing so. I'm not saying you couldn't get away with it, but I wouldn't advise it. Let's begin by pressing M on the keyboard in order to select our marquee tool. And then I'm just going to click and drag a selection like such. I'm going to right click and layer via copy, then press V on my keyboard and click and drag this onto this canvas. And of course, wait patiently for Photoshop to catch up. Okay, now that we have that, we actually don't need this image anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close it. Okay, so the first thing we notice is obviously the sizing is off. And I'm thinking there might be a color issue as well, but we'll see. So I would like to transform this to fit the image better. I'm going to drop the opacity of layer one so I can see through to the background layer and therefore line these up a little bit better. Let's zoom in with a command or control plus space bar in order to access the pan tool. And I'm just going to reposition this. Next, I'm going to press command or control T on my keyboard in order to access the free transform tool. Going to click and drag and just make his face smaller and then reposition. And I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at his eyes, his hairline and his ears. And I'm trying to get all of those to line up as best as possible. Luckily, he actually was in pretty much the same position because sometimes if someone tilts their head, you might have to rotate this or even skew it or change the perspective. But I get the feeling that this is actually going to line up pretty well. If at any point you can't see what you're doing, you could drop the opacity a little bit more or bring it up. That's just in an effort to line everything up as best as possible. Or you can even click that layer on and off the visibility icon to see, does it look like it's lining up? Once you feel that you have a pretty good handle on that, you can press enter or return in order to commit that change. Next, I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100% and I'm going to add a layer mask to layer one by clicking the icon at the bottom of the layers palette. I'm going to press B on my keyboard in order to access the brush tool and I'm going to make sure that the brush tool is set to black and the opacity is 100% in the tool options bar. Also check your mode, make sure it's set to normal and your flow is at 100. If your brush is not behaving the way that you think it should, make sure you check the tool options bar. Let's make this brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key. And I'm just going to start to brush over this area. It looks like we're erasing it, we're not. We're just concealing it so that we can reveal what's beneath it. So I'm going to brush over this carefully. I'm watching his face, his collar. I'm thinking, should I just bring his whole face in? Should I just do the smile? Okay, I basically just masked it all out so that I could press 
X on my keyboard to change my brush to white to reveal. And I just wanna see what happens if I just tried to put the smile on his face. Well, it's a little bit off and his nose is going strange directions. So I think ultimately, I actually want his whole face. I want that in his entire face from the other image on this photo, not just his smile. Occasionally, I'll just grab eyes. But in this case, I'm, I'm doing, actually his whole head is what I should say. Now I'm watching this collar situation here, pressing X again to grab that black brush, and then my left bracket to make the brush smaller. And so this is just fine tuning how I am blending layer one with the background layer. And it's, it's gonna take a little bit of work. Let's zoom out with a command or control minus to see if we are headed in a good direction. And it does look like it made his head come forward a little bit, but that doesn't actually trouble me too much. Again, you can spend time here refining this. You can go back into the free transform tool. You can rotate it a little bit. What's concerning me more right now is the coloring. So if I look at that color versus that color, I notice that the smile is a bit more magenta and blue. So we're going to need to correct that with an adjustment layer. So we'll click the adjustment layer icon and we'll choose color balance. Now I only want this to be applied to his face. Therefore, I'm going on to hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard and hover my cursor between these layers in order to get the square with the arrow and click in order to clip this adjustment to layer one. I have a feeling this is in the mid-tone range, so I'm going to leave that selected, and I feel that it needs to be warmed up. So I'm going to add a little bit of red and take down the blue by adding yellow, and maybe even pull up on the green a little bit. And now if I look at that before and after, you can see the difference in his face, but we don't know if that really worked in terms of the entire image, so let's hold down Alt or Option and click the visibility icon on the background and see, oh, I made him a little bit too green. So I'm gonna pull that down, warm it up, add a little bit more red, which is, it goes along with magenta, but it's in a different range, okay. So let's look at that before and after. Okay, that color is looking much better. Let's zoom back out and see that before. And then you know what I noticed? I feel like it needs a little bit more light. So let's go ahead and quickly add a curves adjustment layer. We're going to clip it the same way we did the color balance, holding down Alter Option and clicking it so that it only impacts layer one. And you can see I can make his face brighter or darker. And I think it needs to be just a little bit brighter. So again, if we hold down Alter Option, we can look at the overall before and after. And I think that looks pretty good. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.